a little brisk out here this morning 17 degrees wind chill to two two days ago it was 65 and almost 70 degrees that's february and texoma i'll take anything if it's got moisture but i don't know there might be two or three inches of snow but it's awful little and it looks pretty dry so like i say we'll take what we can get if this is the only way we can get it in february we'll take it so got stuff kind of plugged in and put in the shop if i can get my welder started i may work on some cutting edges this morning so uh, put the battery charger on the welder yesterday so figured i'd have to crank it a little bit but anyway we'll see what we can get into today y'all stay warm we got us some heat that thing works pretty good a little loud but you won't freeze to death okay i got all the paint ground off with my grinder on these end bits it's hard that that weld won't stick to them and it's hard to weld and i hope you can hear because the heater running but uh, what i'll do i'll just take some uh, studi hard surface rod and i'll just uh, put passes up here on the back and uh, some right on the very tip of this and then on the face of the cutting edge I'll put one pass Right here, and then I'll put some X's just to kind of protect this as the dirt slides off of it These are wider Than the cutting edge This right here is half inch wide to start off with and these end bits need to be wider They're they're, they're what hits the ground first uh, They're a quarter of an inch wide so the longer you can protect this uh, cut this end bit from wearing down the longer you protect your cutting edges uh, so That's why I put some on the back. Here's where your wire starts right here is this as the dirt this bolts This is all against your mow board As that dirt slides across this right here It starts getting it thinner and as it gets thinner it starts wearing it down So once you start wearing this tip down you see it gets wider and wider and wider and there comes a point when it gets down here this is too much welding to build it back up so uh, you can reverse your uh, cutting edges you can flip them over and get another wear on the other side but you can't these so really if you was wanting to keep it where you don't have to do much welding or, or you just wear them to nothing and throw them away you could go through a set of in two sets of end bits for one side uh, then that way you wouldn't take so much to flip these uh, to weld these back. Some people just put them on there like they are, wear them, then throw them away. Uh, I can get a little bit more out of them if I'll just take time to put a little hard surface on there. And if I really wanted to bring them back up to where they was, I'd have to pull them off pretty quick where it wouldn't take so much. But if you'll just put a, uh, put you some hard surface here and on the end, you'll be surprised how much them things will last. And, because uh, as these go down your cutting edge goes down and it's so thin it'll go down pretty quick so but these hit the ground first uh they're about an eighth of an inch taller or longer than your cutting edges so anyway that's what we're going to be doing i'm going to start welding so i'm not going to film none of that you can't see nothing welding anyway so i'll let you see what they look like when i get through well i got the end bits done i think that's all i'm going to do today I go in my feet are cold so anyway this is just like i say that's mostly just to kind of keep the dirt from washing out the front but the back side's the most important side that's where you wear once this starts to go everything goes down so that's all built up and that's where the dirt hits and does the most damage so that's all i'm probably gonna do like i say and i'll work on them tomorrow so i'll let y'all see that tomorrow after it warms up a little bit i think it's supposed to be down to 10 tonight maybe so i'll have the heater fired up where i'm coming here and do a little bit so we'll see what tomorrow brings so y'all stay warm okay got the middle sections finished as you can see here it's on the back side where we put the hard surface where they 
that part hits the dirt and that's when you lose that you lose your edge so that's the back side of that one and here's the here's the front side of the other side so got it all x'd and got the edge of the back of it looks just like that and then i made one pass along this edge here and the rest of it's filled in on the back and i bolt them down because as soon as you start welding on this surface they have a tendency to warp so usually it's not too bad you can pull it down with your bolts but i do as soon keep it as straight as i can because it seems like the thinner they get and the more you weld on them they really start warping so anyway all i got to do now is get the old one off and put these new ones on and ready to dig so we'll let y'all see that when we get them on there then so Take a peek outside, it's 45 degrees and everything's starting to melt off, so looks like it's going to be a nice couple days and next week they said in the 60s, so there's what's going on around north central Texas, the snow's gone and it'll have a little bit of moisture in it, but it was it was pretty dry, so, so we'll let y'all see when we get them new cutting edges on, so we'll talk to y'all later, bye. Hello dirt movers, we're at the shop today still. I went and looked yesterday where I had to move and the road was pretty muddy. So I left with a red pickup and come back with a brown one. So I've got another day to stay here and try to get some of this done. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my cutting edge this morning, I guess, while I've got it here, then I'm through with that. And I've got my oil drained in. I was wanting to change my fuel filter while I've got this panel off. It's the one on the left, but they got Got them back ordered, so I can go ahead and change my oil filter. That's the little one to the right there. And that's not a big deal, changing that fuel filter. I can do that anytime. Just pull that one panel off. So anyway, I've got my one, one bucket full of oil. I've got the other one draining. That way I can sit out here and work. I let it run for quite a while to warm the engine up because it was pretty cool but it drained out pretty good so i got it warmed up but whenever you change your cutting edge you hope it's the last time you used it you didn't back drag nothing that was wet and stuck to the blade well guess what it stuck to the blade and i, I remember now i back drug some stuff that was a little wet so i've done hit it with a sledgehammer and the one piece fell off but i'll just take my air chisel and i think once i start it'll come out of there but you got to get all that out before you get your bolts uh undone so that's what i'm going to do first just get there chisel and get them knocked off and try to get that thing off of here
Then was a little warped. If you notice how the end sprung up when I undid the bolts, that's just from getting thin and welding on them on the face a lot that start to warp.
We'll stop filming for a little bit and let the air kind of clear. Clear it out here, took two fans. I am gonna change bolts. Here's the, the new ones. You can see the width of the head on them and here's an old one. You can see how thin uh, them are getting. So I might as well just go ahead and put new bolts in. Not all of them are this bad, but I can pick the ones out and kind of clean them up. Never can tell you may have one go bad or something. So that's what I'm going to do. And I always put on a little uh, anti-seize. It's just some copper based stuff and it keeps them from just sitting up and getting like concrete where you can't hardly bust them off or you strip the threads. So I usually put some of that on every time I put a new bolt and it just keeps them from seizing up. And, Cause them things are running in dirt and everything else and you can tell. So anyway, all I gotta do is lay my right there and we'll start tightening them things up. And I usually tighten them up with a little or half inch driver impact wrench instead of that heavy one. Then at the last I put the heavy one on there.
Well, it never fails. Whenever I bring that dozer in the shop, it always leaves a mess behind, but I can't really blame it all on the dozer. I don't know who makes the biggest mess, me or the dozer, but I guess it's a draw, but I wind up cleaning it up, so maybe that's how my wife feels when I get in the house sometimes. So anyway, we're loaded up and fixing to head out to northern part of the county, so we'll let y'all see what we're up to next got a diversion terrace to build going to a tank to put more water in it when it rains and then maybe a tank dam two miles from there but we'll see so again thank y'all for watching these videos if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that and share them with your friends and leave any comments or questions you got at the at the bottom and uh hit the like button so until we get out in the country and get into something else this is James with Dunsmore Moving Dirt. We'll see you later. Bye.